What's up developers, I'm that one Unity dev and today we're going to recreate a similar art style to My Little Light. To answer your question, what exactly is My Little Light? Well, it's a game me and my wife made for the Bracky's 2021 Game Jam. The jam was one of the biggest I've ever competed in, with 10k people who signed up and 2k entries. I didn't really expect the type of attention it received. The number one thing everyone who played mentioned is definitely the visuals. Although it might look visually stunning, the technique is very simple, and I believe to some extent, even if you have no art talent, it's still quite achievable. This video is going to be an information overload, so in order to make things simpler, we're going to break it up into two small parts. What we'll be covering in this video is project setup, creating sprites, importing sprites, background lighting, and middle ground lighting. The end result will look something like this. First, let's go over what we use to create our game. Obviously, as the title and channel name implies, we're going to be using Unity, specifically the URP and the 2D sprite renderer. If you're not using Unity, don't worry. I imagine any engine can achieve a similar effect, so there is still valuable information in the video, but just know that this is going to be a video targeted toward the Unity engine. I use Photoshop for all my sprites, this is because I'm familiar with it, but you could use anything you like. This also includes pixel art. I like to use a drawing tablet because I can draw line weights, but this is mainly because I'm lazy and don't want to waste time scaling my brush up and down. So just know this is 100% doable with a mouse, but again, a drawing tablet might save you some time. You should also have a strong reference. This could be anything from a game you really like the feel of to an animation, or even this video. You're not only limited to just one either, you can mix and match all you like. The key here is to mimic certain elements from your reference. I repeat, mimic certain elements. The purpose of our reference is to get inspired to create something new. I shouldn't have to lecture you on why stealing is wrong. And that's it. So with that out of the way, let's start making our prototype. Let's create a new universal render pipeline project. We also need to import the 2D sprite package. And once that's done, we need to change our renderer to the 2D renderer. We can now add a global light 2D to our scene, so we can see any sprites that we add. Don't forget to change your camera's projection mode to orthographic, or else you'll still be looking into 3D space. Just a little disclaimer before we go any further. I would go over the basics of how to make a simple platformer in Unity, but there's already so much content on it, and by clicking on the video, I'm under the assumption that you don't want to know, or you already do know how to make one. Now that isn't to say I won't answer any programming questions you may have in the comments, or at least point you in the right direction. But for the purpose of this video, it's not something that we're going to be covering. With our basic platformer finished, let's move on to our drawing application. The drawing process with any game is based on personal preference. This applies to everything we'll be covering past this point, it's up to you, the creator, if you want something to look a certain way, or different from what I'm creating. By all means, don't feel like you have to follow me to pinpoint accuracy, but I will take you step by step through my process. Because little thought goes into it, the very first thing I like to do is create some platforms. I make silhouettes starting with a rectangle as the base, and I add little protrusions around it. Being messy and inconsistent is good, because it makes your platforms look unique and stand out when the background light hits them. Next is the player character. You want to have an easy to read design, as the people playing your game need to grow a connection to them. For this I suggest simplistic, with a few features that stand out. I like to go with a smooth texture to contrast the platforms and environment, but that's just my preference. You might notice that I'm not leaving it all black, and this is because your players should always have some sort of an illumination on them. Not to say you can't break this rule, or just make the lighting black in full shadow areas, it's just one of the major rules I follow in my games. It just makes for an easy to read experience. The next thing is the eyes. I always make the eyes white. Not only is this just a stylistic choice, but it also adds on to the previous point of making your characters easily readable. 
Because the game is dark themed, I like to create a light source of some kind early on. This can be anything that fits into your game world, whether it's fireflies, torches, street lights, or plant life. This is the only thing in the world that I suggest adding color to. When we put the lights in, it'll give it an emissive look and feel. You might notice that I'm being pretty sloppy with my line work. This is perfectly fine. Nothing is perfect, and the sketchy look only adds to the artistic direction that I'm going for. The next thing is color. I just create a layer below the line work and fill it in. Simple enough. You can also add gradients to the flat color to highlight the emissive part, but it's up to you if you feel that it needs it. To help sell your environment as an actual world, you can add a gradient with a brighter sky, gradually getting darker towards the ground. The gradient is pure white, 100% opacity, to pure black, 0% opacity. With the background disabled, this gives you a gradient to anything you put behind it. That's it for the major sprites for now. You can use the same strategy and go crazy experimenting, creating background art, new platforms, lights, and small details to help expand your world. I'm assuming you guys know how to import sprites, but if you don't, you can just drag and drop them into your project. You can change the setting here to Sprites 2D, and if you have a sprite sheet like I do, you can change the sprite mode to multiple. After importing them, drag them into the scene, and voila, your sprites are now in the game. I went ahead and linked my ground sprites to the ground, player to the player, lights to the lights, etc. This is already starting to take shape, but we are missing the main ingredient, the lighting itself. For the background lighting, we are going to use the gradient that we created earlier. We can scale it up and put it on the lowest sorting layer. This is a very good start, but if we adjust the main camera's background color, you can immediately see the result we're after. The color you choose will be whatever you want your background's color to be, whether it be dark blue, pink, green, or purple. The gradient will overlay it and make the background a gradient of that color. We can also change the 2D global light to match the background. This will give all of your sprites a slight hue shift to match the environment. The foreground lighting is quite simple. All you need to do is experiment by placing more 2D lights in your scene. I'm using a 2D point light. 2D lights have a sorting layer option. You can use this to target specific layers that you want to receive light. This is definitely a good starting point, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. In part 2, we will be adding the last few ingredients. Background particles, parallaxing, camera controllers, fog, and sound. I hope you enjoyed today's video and maybe you learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next part.